下嗰啲商人㗎啦，佢就係一食曬上癮，所以佢冇特價。Post-mortem carried out by Dr. D. Dunwoody, Metropolitan Police Surgeon, Central Division. Female, approximately 20 years of age. Younger, surely. Dr. Watson. Strayed. Dr. Watson is a surgeon here at the hospital. I know perfectly well who Dr. Watson is. Stocking, tied about the throat. It would be better to cut that ligature. To keep the knot intact. It's an old trick of Holmes. There's a world of information in a knot. Short black jacket, cheap fur round collar, black silk skirt, shabby genteel, typical prostitute's attire, body well nourished, bruising round the throat, band like contusions to wrists and knees. Looks like she's been trussed up. Probably some sexual game with a client that got out of hand. Poor child. I'm not smoking distinctive tobacco. I'm not wearing eau de cologne. Reek of the slaughterhouse. Eau de morgue. I'm sorry, I'm going to go to the hospital. I'm going to go to the hospital. Life away from Baker Street seems to suit you, Watson. I see you've put on seven and a half pounds since last we met. Half a stone, exactly. 
Indeed? I should have thought it was a little more. I'll have a cup of tea as well, please. Miss Aleko. Why are you dogging my heels, Watson? Potential case. Young girl, 16, perhaps 17. Found on the banks of the Thames at Shadwell. Silk stocking round her throat. If you're looking for sensational material for one of your chronicles of crime, I suggest you adopt your usual practice and make it up. I'm not looking for material. I'm trying to save a dear friend from killing himself with narcotics and boredom. <laughs> your concern is touching. You promised. Promises are like pie crusts. They are made to be broken. Come down to London Hospital, take a look at this girl. Give my regards to your fiance. Mrs. Hudson? Mrs. Mrs. Hudson! Your host for the last three days. No, 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 no. Mrs. Hudson, have you been tidying up? Hardly. Sir. What? What time will you dine? 7.30. Day after tomorrow. away in beauty's bloom on thee shall press no ponderous tomb this is the second time you've known where to find me Watson am I that predictable perhaps at long last I've learned to apply your methods post-mortem reporting yes contents of her stomach. About a dram or so of brandy and some partly digested food which appeared to be good Belgian chocolate. A sign of coitus? Not at all. She was a Virgo intacta. So much for the police said this assumption that she was a prostitute. Well, at least someone had the good sense to leave this knot intact. Watson, with the possible exception of this stocking, these are not her clothes. Really? Well, she's not a working girl of any description. The nails are well kept, the hands are soft, the teeth are straight. Holmes. This is the body of Lady Alice Pentney. What? Duke and Duchess of Narborough's daughter. <laughs> I love her. She's yeah. okay. We're not like that. Oh, my God. Hey. What are you talking about? What are you talking about? Let's make a start. Roberta, would you take my daughter's place for now? 
Yes, Your Grace. Into your positions. do. Let us not forget that the night we present this tableau, the king will be there. Shall we try again? This thing isn't stuck on properly. <laughs> <laughs> I shall be back presently. Where is Lady Alice now, Your Grace? Not certain. To be honest, we fell out recently over a trivial matter, and now she's punishing me by not being here for the rehearsal. What's all this about, Inspector? I must ask you to come with me to Whitechapel to look at the body of a young girl. What? Who answers your daughter's description? That's impossible. Roberta, please don't worry. It's sure to be something and nothing. Duchess of Narborough is here. It's not her. You're certain? Just as I said, it's not her. Excuse me. Who are you? I'm Sherlock Holmes. I know your name. Look again, Your Grace. Can you confirm that this is Lady Alice Bentley? Is this what she was wearing? Yes. These are not her clothes. Why was she wearing these clothes? Goodness sake. It's too awful. Tupney Hapney Hall is one thing. This God help me is quite another. I'm glad to see your thoughts and prayers are with the dead girl's family this trade. <laughs> Mrs. Hudson! I think you might recognize our guest. Dr. Watson! Mrs. Hudson. Oh, I am so glad you're here. He's been away. Scheming stars before I even take off my hat. And you can stop that ridiculous dumb show as well. You always were one of the most untidy men, but really, Holmes. Watson, it's a free country. People have the right to send me letters. I have the right to leave them unopened. Now, Duke of Narborough. Yes, Watson. George de Vere Pentney. KG, PCARA. Oh, my God, half the alphabet. Well, pour us a couple of brandies, would you, Watson? There will be no more brandies in the middle of the day, Herbs. Sixth Duke, educated at Eton, Trinity College, Cambridge, seats in Narborough Hall, Hampshire. Half of our garnish, etc., etc., etc. The body is like a fire in the grate. It'll go out unless it gets more coal. How intensely interesting, Watson. You must eat, Holmes. 
You have to give the body enough food to burn every day. Well, happily, there are some exceptions to every rule. Fine. Breakfast. One rasher of bacon, one egg, three ounces of... Bacon. Really, Watson? Save your breath to cool your porridge. Hmm? Hello? I'm afraid I... Well, in that case, I would be delighted. <laughs> Eight for 8.30. Very well. Goodbye. Apparently, you're not the only one to take an interest in my diet. Oh? Yes? The Duke of Narborough is here. Uh-huh. I seem to have conjured up the man himself. Send him up, Mrs. Hudson. Perhaps I should go, Holmes. No, not a bit. Stay where you are. Come on, old chap. It'll be just like old times. Good day, Your Grace. And pray take a seat. This is my friend and colleague, Dr. Watson. Lord Blakemore tells me I may place implicit reliance upon your judgment and discretion. I have determined, therefore, to consult you in reference to a very painful event which has occurred. I'm aware of your grace's loss. I want you to find my daughter's killer, Mr. Holmes. I will pay handsomely for your services. My professional charges are upon a fixed scale, your grace. I do not vary them unless I remit them altogether. You give me carte blanche to act in this affair. Within the bounds of decency and taste, how shall I keep in touch with you? You can reach me at my club. Good day, gentlemen. A complete gentleman. Jack would be a gentleman, Watson, if you could speak French. I shall see you tonight for dinner. Oh, I, I can't, I'm afraid, Holmes. I'm dining with my fiance. So, what's in am I? Eight for eight thirty. <laughs> I see no reason for this. Inspector Lestrade is doing no more than his duty, Your Grace. But I think perhaps, Lestrade, it would be better to call the staff one at a time. And the staff first, to avoid any further milling about. Thank you, Mr. Holmes. May I see Lady Alice's room, please? Yes, of course. Policeman trampling everywhere like a herd of buffalo. Come on, everybody out. Yeah, put that down where it was. Now, come on. And here. Have this bottle examined for fingerprints. Keep some of the brandy for analysis. Egyptian deities. <laughs> Made from the most fragrant of Turkish tobaccos. 
Two were smoked in a holder, and two were extinguished beneath a gentleman's shoe. You shouldn't put up a fight with skin or hair beneath the fingernails. No sign of a struggle. Be careful, Holmes, for God's sake. Perhaps he gave her the Belgian chocolate. Lestrade, when was the last time we had a clear night? Sunday. She must have been caught. She was wrapped in this. Is there a fire escape over there? Yes, Holmes, there is. Must have known his way about. Conduct a thorough search of the muse below and fingerprint everyone. Everyone? Without exception. One last night under the stars before this devilish fog descended. A bottle of L'Esprit de Courvoisier. That would be from His Grace's cellar, taken up to His Grace on Sunday night, just after 11 p.m. I see. You wanted to see me, Mr. Bates? Yes, Florence. Florence, whose coat is this? It is the Duchess's coat. Are you certain? Oh, yes. Thank you. I assume this mess will wash off. How sordid it all is. Was your daughter very unhappy? That is impertinent, Mr. Holmes. On the contrary, Your Grace, it is entirely pertinent. Where did you imagine Lady Alice was on Sunday night? We didn't know. She had once or twice gone off before. Unchaperoned. What time did you leave your library that night, Your Grace? I went to my bed at about midnight, I think. Shortly after that, in the early hours of Monday morning, Lady Alice was abducted from the roof. The roof? Outside her bedroom, where she was sitting, wrapped in her mother's fur coat, smoking her father's cigarettes and drinking her father's brandy. She was taken down the fire escape out of the area via the mews. Good God. I believe she knew her killer.